What is up YouTube, this is Eduardo Marino once again with another short tutorial video. This time I will be showing you how to HDR a set of bracketed raw images using blending modes in Photoshop. Let's get to it. Alright, so here I have a set of raw images that I was given from my dear friend Alan Legrady. Captured when he was shooting at the Oregon Eclipse Festival. Quick equipment rundown, he used a Canon 5D Mark III with a Canon Glass EF 100-400mm to lens, along with a Celestron solar filter, obviously not to burn out your sensor. And on top of that, he also used a Skywatcher Star Adventurer motorized mount in order to track the subtle movement of the sun creeping up behind the moon. I'm going Gonna be leaving all the links of his equipment and more down below so you can go ahead and check them out yourselves. With that said, Alan's idea was to capture as many different exposures as fast as he could during the phase of totality. And as a result, he was able to capture a total of 7 raw images that range from the darkest to the brightest. As you guys already know, this is ideal. The more exposures you capture, the higher the dynamic range you'll be able to achieve when converting your images to HDR. However, for this instance, it's not going to be as easy as it is by simply using Lightroom's HDR merge tool. The program won't be able to identify any detail that is around our main subject, therefore it won't be able to process our image with the click of a button. The same applies when using Photoshop. The program does not give you enough control on being able to acquire as much detail as possible in our main subject which is the moon and also not being able to control the light intensity of our corona so here's where I decided to find a solution myself and when I had an experiment using blending modes in Photoshop and since our images have a high amount of blacks and high amounts of whites this should work perfectly and it does so here we go, start off by uploading your images as layers into Photoshop or if you're in Lightroom by highlighting and then right clicking going to edit in and then hitting open as layers in Photoshop. Now that you have your layers in Photoshop, your blending modes are located at the top of your layer panel. And as you can see, once you click on it, a whole list pops up. Each of these are a set of groups that are easy to understand. Let me show you by dragging a black square to Photoshop. Here as you can see, the first group is your darken group, which absorbs whites and keeps blacks. Next one is your lighten group, which is basically at the opposite that you can see absorbs the blacks and keeps the whites. And lastly is your contrast group, which is a blend of the two, kinda giving you a transparent look of the whites and blacks together. The rest of your groups are really don't need to worry about because they honestly do more harm than good to your image. Now that we know how blending modes work, we can now begin playing with them. But first, let me just say that there's not a perfect combination of blending modes that is gonna give you a consistent result. I experimented and came up with this method that in the end it worked for me. So if you do try this with your own set of exposure images, make sure to be patient and finding your own perfect combination on blending modes in order to achieve the best results for your own image. But for now, let's continue. Okay, so for my underexposed shots, I went ahead and used screen and lighten in order to bring out just the highlights from those images, leaving them set at 100% opacity. Next, my fourth exposure, I went ahead and used the darken blending modes. For this instance, I chose multiply and dragging the opacity down to 25%. Next image below that, I went ahead and set it again to lighten, but this time at 50% opacity in in order to not blown out my highlights. Now for our overexposed shots, I've decided to use our contrast groups of blending modes to bring out the details from both of the whites and blacks and set it just to 25% opacity. And for our last exposure, I went ahead and used no blending modes and leave it on normal at 25% opacity in order to keep as much of the detail that is in the moon. To finish things off, I duplicated our last overexposure image and then masked it and used linear burn in order to increase the contrast and the detail from our moon. Once you're happy with your results, jump back into Lightroom and apply some last finishing touches. There you have it. Hope this video is going to help you achieve better HDR images and if you have any further questions please make sure to leave a comment down below. As of now, thank you for watching, my name is Eduardo Marino, happy holidays and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.